unmute yourself while you speak and when you let go you go back on mute automatically so it's a bit of a quicker way to um, to speak and contribute to the meeting um, you can also put your questions in the chat button on the lower part of the screen and um, Alex Hornbuckle my assistant is going to monitor the chat and the hand raises and make sure that all your questions get out to the group so uh, without further ado, uh, let's get the subject rolling, the discussion rolling about net promoter score. Um, as we know, it's one very, very simple question, but there is a lot under the hood with NPS. Um, we use it to measure sentiment, overall customer sentiment. We extrapolate that into loyalty, and um, almost all of us use it as some kind of a leading measure toward renewal and that's the relevance to us as a customer success uh, organization. Um, a lot of people put a lot of reliance on this measure uh, but it's also had some healthy debate over the years. Um, like any tool it needs to be used wisely uh, and also with awareness of, of the possible bias it can introduce um, to your process or the, the bias that's inherent in the measure itself. Um, so without further ado Let's spend five minutes asking our questions related to N NPS or any closed feedback loop system. Um, we're gonna stop after five minutes and get to the answers. So if you have a question, feel free to hit the hand raise button and um, we'll start uh, marking them down for our discussion. Okay, Brian. Yeah, so my question is just around um, just the closed loop itself. So once you've collected the data, you've analyzed the data, you synthesize it, how are you going back to those same individuals saying, hey, we heard you and here's what we have done since that time frame? How are you kind of that final stage communicating out what, what you've done based on their feedback? Excellent. Okay. I'm, that was actually a question that I had myself. So that, that'll be uh, make for a super good discussion. Uh, Sarah uh, Porcino, or Pacino, sorry, you have no, a question. No yeah. Hi, Emily. I'm so glad to see another member um, facilitating. So great job. Um, my question is around closing the loop internally. So I think when you, as customer success leaders, what I've experienced is that when you launch an NPS initiative or any kind of survey to your customers, um, automatically your, the E-team within your organization perks up because customer feedback is so important. So I'm curious um, how, um, number one, how people are packaging that up for their executives, and then number two, um, how they're holding uh, techniques that they've used to hold executives accountable for their actions. Mm -hmm. So if there's product feedback that you're getting, et cetera. Excellent, excellent question. Okay, uh, how about anybody else? I, I have a question. Um, I'd be interested to hear examples of collection methods. We, we use email, but we also just launched Pendo, so in-app in um, in-app gathering. And you know, I, I maintain a spreadsheet and try to uh, collect the scores between all, all the different ways we're, we're gathering um, scores. So yeah, I would just be interested in people's methodology and, and what you've seen work most efficiently. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent question. And um, also one that I had on my mind as well are all those different collection methods and which they, they could be different for each one of us. Um, so I look forward to our discussion on that. Uh, Lilith, it looks like you have your hand up. Yeah. Um, so my question is around, um, is there a way that we can see how statistically relevant this whole thing is and how much we should actually rely on this kind of stuff? Because I sometimes have the feeling that our customers just want to click somewhere so that the pop-up disappears. Um, so, yeah, sorry. Um, and the other thing is, uh, yeah, I, I'm also very interested in the best way to present this kind of thing, uh, the, the NPS, sorry. Um, so, yeah. Present to customers or present to your board? Oh, no, to customers. To customers, yeah. okay. And you asked really um, a million dollar question on, on reliance and um, you know, how much the data really reflects true sentiment. Yeah. We're making big decisions on it. Um, 
Okay, excellent. Question. I mean, I have my statistician on it, but uh -huh. she is like putting her hands over her head. Like, I don't know. This is so variant. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's one of the common questions we get around NPS. Is, are you capturing, you know, of all those responses, that bell curve of people, are you just capturing the ends? Are you capturing the negative end? Um, you know, how, how much uh, weight should you give um, to the NPS measure? Excellent question. I'm sure we have some and great- And sorry, questions. just to add, and also like, is there an ideal time frame when to present these NPS? Like um, um, multiple times per year or once a year or things like that? Timing as to not annoy. Awesome. Okay, anybody else? Uh, hand raised feature to throw some questions out there for us. I have a question if nobody else does. Um, one thing I was thinking about is NPS doesn't tell you the why, it, it just tells you that, that one measure of sentiment. Um, so I have a question for the team, and if we have time at the end of our discussion, hopefully we can get to it. How do you, if you struggle with this, how do you get insights into high or low ratings? Um, it's one thing to say, we've got a high NPS, we've got a low NPS, or this customer rated us low. Getting into the why is a whole different question, and I think, as a, as a CS professional, we can, we can kid ourselves a lot and maybe tell ourselves stories of why it might be. And has anybody ever embarked on a, a project to really discover the true reasons why you got that high or low raisin, rating and not just uh, make an assumption? Okay, so we might not have any more questions. Um, by all means, if you, if you have anything that comes to mind during the discussion, raise your hand and we'll throw it out there. But let's get started with what we have right now. Um, Brian, you asked a question about um, going back to customers and kind of closing that loop. Can you, can you warm us up again on that question and reframe it for us? Yeah, sure. I mean, so once you have the results and maybe there's a couple of themes that come out of it. At what point and when are you going back to tell them that you actually took action on what they gave you feedback on? I mean, I think that's a common challenge with any survey. You think about doing an internal employee survey or surveying your customers. Hey, we listened to you and here's what we did. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Does that, um, how about Christine? Can you help us with that, Christine Popovich? Yeah. Um, so. I might, I can think about how I answer it right now. Um, I just drew a blank there actually. Uh, <laughs> I had actually a really good point of what I'm doing today. Uh, if you could just repeat the question. Sure, um, so Brian was asking about um, how you, you go back to customers or how you, how you close that loop on, hey, we received your feedback, we took this action, this is what you can expect from us now. Uh, right, okay. Uh, set up a Trello board. Uh, so we have, we're like a food tech company. So we do a recipe roadmap. So I use Trello to, um, it's an open Trello. I was also in FinTech as well. So any feedback that came in, we did a kind of Trello roadmap. And that's how we would relay that to our customers of like, hey, we are actually uh, real time taking your feedback and implementing it into our product and feature board and allowing people to interact with it on a daily hourly basis. Okay, that's excellent. So you, you track all the, the folks that you need to get back to within your Trello system, or do you share your Trello board with your customers? Share the Trello board as well as um, tag them. So we use intercom, which is really easy to just set up tags. Mm -hmm. So feature request, and then you can actually just like set up a campaign be like, hey guys, great news. We launched this feature. You asked for it. We listened. Here it is. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Um, Kelly Hook, do you have anything to add on, on the subject? Any Have you encountered this challenge before? Um, so, yeah, sorry. I, I also could use a repeat on, on the original question. <laughs> sure. So this is uh, taking that, that feedback, really closing the loop on feedback and getting back to your customers on maybe improvements that they've suggested or um, kind of just tying it off with customers based on their feedback and getting them back into a good place. 
Yeah, we're we're super early stage Series A. I mean, when we get a response that's below seven, I mean, we jump on on a call as soon as possible, um, mm -hmm. and when we want to understand what we can do to become uh, at least a passive, if not a promoter, one day. Um, so we're we're responsive in that way, and we also have a low number of respondents overall. We've only got forty respondents because um, we our customer base is still still small and growing. So right now it's just it's just talk to the customer if there's some negative um, response to understand exactly what's behind that and, and ask them exactly what it would take to to become a, a 10. Always, always a good practice for sure. Um, and that might lead us into our next question of, of closing the loop internally. We talked about closing that loop externally with your customer, but we know for closed loop systems, you've got your external and also your internal. So Sarah, you asked, um, how do you package this up for our executives? Um, do you want to expand on the question or did I, did I capture it accurately here? Yeah, sure. I can add a, a little bit more context um, to kind of get people thinking around different ways. Um, love the Trello board idea, by the way. Um, so anyway, yeah, I think that my experience has been when I when I announce that I'm launch, launching a customer, and we package ours as a customer feedback survey. So NPS is a part of this broader survey, and we do it twice a year. Um, but when we, when we launch these things, our executives are automatically saying, hey, we want the results. When are the results going to be out? And um, in the past, before I've taken ownership of it, we've just kind of given them weekly updates. And it's been more of a data dump versus really insights and, and getting to your point around the why. Like, what are we hearing behind these things? This year, I am providing them with the you know, presentation with insights along with the raw data. And I'm still struggling with how can I also hold them accountable? Meaning, you know, there's marketing changes, there's professional services changes, there's product changes that need to happen. So I'm curious about crowdsourcing ideas around how others have done that and if they've ever encountered that same challenge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would guess that we probably all have in some capacity um, does anybody have any insight or have they been, are they farther down this road than uh, Sarah and some of the rest of us are? Um, Kathleen, I see your hand up. Yeah, so, um, and I apologize, I'm sitting al fresco right now, so if it's a little loud, I'll speak directly into the mic. So, I think this is an opportunity for people, for, for you to think about how can we use this data and provide value across your entire customer base. So, one thing that I was working to doing with some of my other jobs was, and have done, is create a newsletter featuring, like, these are the product updates, this is what's happening, like, breaking it down versus a month versus three months. Like, you know what the plan is. Everybody has their plan. See what product is comfortable sharing, what seems like it's actually going to get done. Like, it's a give and take, of course, but why not provide an electronic newsletter you know, and say, hey, this is all these and, and showcase like the work that's being done, showcase the works of your clients. Like it's all, thank you. Um, it's all interconnected. And I think also like one thing that we need to remember sometimes we get in a little bit of a bubble. I didn't even know what NPS scores were until like two years ago. That wasn't a thing. When I was, a, I was an account manager at Shutterstock, which is pretty much a CSM and in up until 2016 from like 2013 to 2016 we didn't we didn't even have that we didn't even have really good tools for reporting so if you guys i mean it doesn't matter where you're at it's just i think that use what you have but at the end of the day it's always about what is best for my customer because that is our job is to serve the customer first and foremost the stakeholders internal external doesn't matter like they are the person you're serving and also on the note of product updates there should always be on every website a link to the latest updates if you especially if you have a software just so your customers if they're freaking out just say hey go to that link if you're nope um great points kathleen um i saw some uh chatter in the in the chat feature about uh some affection for your newsletter idea i think that's a great idea and certainly sharing release notes with your customers um 
Does anybody else, has anybody else been through this? Like, do I data dump on the executives or, you know, what insights do I show them? How can I, how can I show them that they're backing me with product or, um, you know, any of our teams marketing um, helps move the needle with NPS? Um, Chris, Chris Jones, your curtains are flowing and you keep catching my eye. Have you been down this road before? <laughs> uh, yeah, we have actually. <laughs> um... For our organization, we're a little further down the road in terms of MPS and using MPS. Ours is actually driven from an executive um, level. So even in getting the information, we have a team of what we call um, project managers that are assigned to do the follow-up with the customer. So a lot of times our MPS feedback is not just on our product, but it may be on our service, how we are doing business with them. So we do have uh, product managers that are assigned, they go in, they speak to the customer, and then we actually feed all of that back into Salesforce. Um, and through Salesforce, we have executive dashboards that they use. The executives can go in and choose to see, okay, you know, do they want to focus on mid-market, SMB, enterprise, or who are their, um, their, their, um, the detractors as opposed to who are in that little neutral spot. So in, in our way, what really happened, because we weren't always this way, but what we found was once we got one executive from the product team who bought into the impact on the business of MPS, that we were able to then use that information, find out from the executives what's critical to them and provide dashboards that they can go in and say, okay, this is what we need to see at this point in the business. That's an excellent point um, to, you know, ask in terms of asking what's important to them. That's, that's a great place to start. Appreciate your advice on that. And since you're farther down the road, you're going to be our resident expert here, I think. <laughs> um, so Lauren also reached out to me on chat here and said that she had something to offer on this subject. Um, so Lauren, do you want to take yourself off mute? Yeah. Hey, so, um, so I work, have worked with a lot of B2B SaaS companies on this and I think CJ nailed the first question I would ask is like, I have actually never seen this work without having executive buy-in and participation. Like it just can't. And so that's where I would start because it's really hard when you're thinking about all these cross-functional leaders and holding them accountable to come back to the meeting without having this as a clear priority for leadership. So um, that's step one. And then step two, I think something that can really help, and you might be doing this beyond NPS, and I know NPS was like a wedge into the feedback conversation, but sometimes, you know, if you're only presenting it in the realm of NPS feedback, it can turn off other stakeholders who are looking at different feedback sources, right? And so you don't know if, you're, what you're looking at, the NPS survey responses are saying the same thing as maybe a product survey or online reviews that marketing is looking at. So I think kind of moving towards a way where everyone's feedback is incorporated in extracting the themes can also help all parties feel accountable and buy into the actual problem that needs to be solved. Um, I think it's awesome that you are sending out these insights regularly. I think you're a step ahead of the curve on that. So, um, yeah, executive buy-in will help you go a long way with the accountability, I think. That's an excellent point. And, and certainly, like, making sure that this slice of feedback is incorporated and looked at universally with other sources of feedback as well, so you have that cohesive picture uh, of what's going on. Um, thank you, Lauren, for that contribution. Um, Gabriel, your hand is also up. I actually want to give ask Lauren a question, which would be, uh, so you said that you don't see it succeeding without the executive leadership, and I absolutely agree with that. Um, I'd like to maybe dig a little deeper into that and how. So how, how would you recommend going about getting that buy-in from the executive leadership? Um, that's a challenge I have. I am CS hire number one, and so uh, any ideas digging a little deeper into that would be interesting for me. Yes. It's an extremely hard question, but it's one that I've tried to dig in and ask myself and our companies we work with because it is so hard. But there are a couple of things that I have seen work. One is 
if you can find partners at your level, like find your product marketing partner or find even your sales partner. Like if they see sales and customer success coming together, like that's a pretty powerful thing. And just say like, Hey, CJ also mentioned impact to say like, Hey, these are problems that we're seeing that are tied to churn that are tied to deals being lost. We need to set up a cadence to start doing something about it. And here's why we need your uh, in, involvement to really make sure it's driving. I think the, the, the reason that executive leadership is so important is that it, it will break at middle management if you don't have that. Someone will be too busy to, to do what they need to do. And I think explaining to them why they should be involved and coming at it with multiple people can be good places to start. No, great stuff. Yeah, yeah, and Gabriel, I just want to add to, to what Lauren says. It, unfortunately, you're going to have to go through some pains before you get the executive buy-in. Because what's going to happen is you're going to have to go through some periods where your customer comes back on something and nobody does anything. And then, unfortunately, they either churn or they reduce their users. And then you are going to have that information to go back, as Aaron said, with other teams, product managers, and say, guys, this was something that was highlighted by our customers in MPS two, three months ago. So unfortunately, I think unless you have an executive who already came from a MPS heavy company coming in, there's gonna be some teething pains where you're gonna lose a few customers, get some bad reviews so that you have the data to go back to your customers. And of course you can use other companies' experiences to help, but yeah, it, there's gonna be some teethings, unfortunately. Absolutely. No, thanks. Thank you both. And I, and I agree with that. Um, the, the reason I was raising my hand was that you asked Emily whether, you know, how, how to go about sharing that internally, whether you do a data dump or not. And from a perspective of a company where there isn't a, an, a customer success culture um, and trying to build that out, I would say a data dump is not the right way to go about it. Um, and the reason being is that I think when a data dump occurs, and we just had this happen with a product um, survey that went out, um, they're just seeing numbers per the categories and not where are, who are the sources of those numbers? Who are the clients that are voicing those things um, and the, the roles that they play, the, the segmentation that they're in? Um, and I had a conversation with our product manager asking them, hey, you, you showed us this roadmap, it looks great, but why are these features being prioritized over the ones that, we're bringing to you, you know, that we're hearing from customers. And, and the response was pretty much, we sent this feedback, this survey out, this is what we got on the survey. And I feel like we've all learned in CS that sometimes you have to capture that customer feedback and then lead them toward the best solution. Because at the end, we are the trusted advisor and they can tell us what they want, but that doesn't always translate exactly to what is the best solution for them. Um, so yeah, I feel like there always has to be interpretation to the data that we receive and we have to pretty much translate that to the executive teams that, okay, this is why you're hearing this, not just, this is the, the what, but this is the how and why behind that. Mm -hmm. Um, Lilith, I know you're getting fired up, but Sonia, your hand's been up for a while. So let's, <laughs> let's, let's divert, uh, let's hear what, uh, you have to say on this topic, Sonia. And also Alex has let me know there's a, there, there's a tons of raised hands in chat about this subject too. So we might want to land here for a little while. Yeah. Um, hi everyone. Um, I work in uh, a tech, a tech in the UK and, um, just wanted to share my experiences because I feel like we've got quite a good process for surfacing up uh, NPS data across our management team. Um, so because we work in EdTech, we kind of follow our NPS surveys along with school terms and, um, we take all that data and we really theme it. And I think that's really important. First of all, we, we theme our data under certain, um, groups so say for example I might take one theme that I can do something about so it might be training our customers that they're not happy with that I will take that theme and my counterpart in product will take another theme that may be to do with user experience and these are two live examples actually um, what's really key is that we tie that back to OKRs um, within the management team and we talk about those OKRs constantly so we do this in every town hall across our company and, and, and as a result, we're always talking about NPS 
what NPS is, why it's important and how we're tracking against it. So I feel like we've got a really good um, loop for reporting on NPS. Uh, what's interesting for me about this conversation is I don't feel like I've got a closed loop yet with our customers. So I'm not necessarily going back to the customers who have responded and saying, hey, you, you said this, we've now done X, Y and Z. But I feel like we're doing all the right things internally. Maybe we're just not sharing that with the customers enough. So, yeah. I, I would hazard a guess that you're not the only one, Sonia, who, who maybe <laughs> feels like that, that loop. There's a little open end on the, the edge of that loop there. Um, I can speak for myself that I, I have the same feeling very often that we don't, we don't often bring that loop completely closed. So um, thanks for sharing that. I, I'm really impressed that you bring OKRs into this. That is something that, um, you know, now that you, when you say it, it seems obvious, but it's something that I don't think we've ever like dedicated some any mental energy to connecting those 100%. two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Alex, is there any, did anyone else want to contribute via chat to this particular question or should we yeah, move on? Yeah, so it looks like Joseph Schmidt, you've had your hand up for a bit and we also have Kelly Hook raising her hand. So Joseph, why don't you come off on mute and tell us what, what you think about this topic. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, so very similar to Sonia, we essentially have baked in NPS from the start of our company about three and a half years ago. And so what we do is we have the SVP of product actually owns the NPS score. Uh, and so what that means for us is they, we essentially, when we go into the board meeting, he's actually reporting on that to a board level and explaining where we are at with things. Um, and the most powerful thing that we did when we were reporting up to the board level was actually segmenting this data out to understand how these different segments actually behave and then also taking that information and executing on it as far as specific changes. Um, and then very similar as well, it's an OKR that is, is held by the SVP of product. So at our all hands, we're talking about it. And we also do launch and learns to educate because very similar, I, I forget who mentioned this, is not everyone understands what NPS is and the actual impact of it and that it is a lagging indicator in a lot of cases, right? Um, the other thing that we did that was wildly successful to essentially support this culture is that we have an integration with Wootrick that goes into Slack. So every single time somebody fills out the NPS, every single person in our company actually sees it. And the really interesting thing that happens is you'll have the customer success managers jumping in and having conversations and they essentially then take action and we'll start reaching out to those customers, which is fantastic. And then the most recent thing that we've done that's been really successful is for us, we ran into a situation where customers were just hitting scores and not actually giving feedback. So it wasn't really actionable for us to take, to actually do anything with the feedback. So with, you know, kind of dealing with C19, things have slowed down in regards to SDR activities. We actually pulled an SDR out of their daily routine. And now what they're doing is they're essentially reaching out to any uh, um, the motors and neutral to actually go ahead and get that feedback. And we're making dials to like three minutes after the survey is actually taken. And so all, with all of that, it's just kind of created this whole culture. So it's baked into our DNA of feedback. I love that. I can't, I'm crazy about this Slack channel where everybody can see that feedback. And also you touched on another key topic uh, related to NPS is who owns it. Um, I don't know, you know, at any of the places I've worked, I don't know if I could say this person is ultimately responsible for NPS. It kind of floats around. Um, so I think having somebody in charge of that and responsible for that part of their OKRs their, or their departments is, is a super key part of the equation that you can't overlook. Um, and I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand up because your background is like the exact same blue as the little hand and it blended right in. Um, so Kelly, I see your hand is up as well. Thank you. I, I was just going to quickly add to Gabriel's point earlier about <clears throat> data analysis, something that we saw that was effective with um, it generating interest in the MPS score <clears throat> was analyzing who responded and, and also if someone bought the product, um, the sales team is always interested in that buyer's opinion later on. So showing the sales team the, the actual response from the buyer, seg segmenting it that way, and then uh, separating out users as well, and then any C-suite executive, um, and then getting that C-suite executive uh, or asking them to you know, fill out a case study or become a customer success story. Mm -hmm. once, once the executive team saw that loop, that okay, we got some feedback, and then we were able to turn that into a success story, identify, product feedback gaps and also show the sales team um, you know how 
how the deal has progressed, uh, those, those were pretty sticky ways to uh, convince senior management. That will definitely gain their attention for sure, for sure. That's something we should all consider doing. Okay, let's, um, since we're, we're not quite out of time, but we're, we're getting there, let's move on. Um, Kelly, while you're off mute here, you had asked a question about collection methods. Um, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't touch on that and talk about um, each of our approaches to collection method methods, whether it's email, whether it's at the EBR, whether it's in-app, um, if you don't have a product that people log into, what's your approach? Um, it, can you, can, did I capture that question appropriately? Do you want to expand on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've, we've tried email surveys, you know, and I think that those response rates have been quite low. The most success I've seen with collection is me asking individuals uh, either right after phone calls or emailing them specifically uh, and, and really trying to, to target people and, and ask and show them how much we value their feedback and would appreciate them filling this out. So I'm just curious if anyone has had success with more automated methods. We, we recently put it in app about two weeks ago and have had no one respond, but I, I just checked the stats and, and about 25 people have seen it. Uh, we put it in, we didn't put it on the homepage, but um, they all just clicked close. So I'm, I'm curious just if people have seen successful automation methods that the customer you know, isn't, doesn't mind filling out. Okay, anybody have anything to contribute? Joseph, I saw you, you're either waving at me or raising your hand. Yeah, this one for us, we have changed our method of tools we've used and delivery styles, I'd probably say about four different times throughout the last three years. Um, and for us, our application is essentially where team members come to get work done. We're very similar to a ticket management system. And what we saw is when we were doing in-app messages directly in the product, it was super disruptive to their workflow and we would constantly get negative scores. So uh, what we did is we essentially, we took it out of the actual first page that they saw and we moved it over to email. And in some situations, customers are being prompted under the settings area where it's more appropriate for them to participate in an actual survey versus in the actual product itself. And what we saw is we actually saw people actually taking time to respond and get better scores. So we essentially, again, we moved it out of the direct first time you logged in and then put it back into the settings section, which, which seemed to work pretty well so far. That's really interesting. I have never heard of that. That sounds like yeah. a great idea. Um, Sarah, your hand also went up around the same time. Yeah. Hi, Kelly. Um, so similar to Joe, Joseph, um, we, we used Pendo um, and it was with product and we were just not getting quality responses. Product wasn't releasing the data. And so we recently shifted and um, customer success actually owns NPS at our organization. And so um, as we were reworking our customer feedback survey, we, um, we actually leverage Gainsight. And so for us, um, we send it out through Survey 2.0 within Gainsight, um, it does connect to our sales force so that our sales teams can see um, the actions that have been taken, the scores that we've received, et cetera. But because CS owns it, um, we, you know, we control the, the output and everything um, and also the follow-up. So any actions that come through, everything's automated in, in that fashion. I would say since we've done that, um, we saw a 12% increase in, in our um, response rates and the quality of our responses. So we had about 155 people participate and we got 120 quality comments around positives, things they'd like to see improved. So for that, um, you know, we're seeing some early success. That's excellent. Um, I, I love the tools that are available out there and um, I don't know how many Gainsight or Pendo users we have in here. Um, from my own perspective, we, we aren't at the point where we use either of those yet, but it's kind of kind of something that's aspirational for us. But certainly if you can implement those tools and um, again, maybe get your executive team to buy in to make an investment in those, uh, it op certainly opens up a whole new world to you. Uh, Brian, you also have your hand up. Yeah, I was just gonna say to answer Kelly's question, we so we currently use SurveyMonkey. We're doing a CSAT survey right now and we we are offering an incentive, so just a gift card for people to 
a little bit of time filling it out. It is a little bit longer of a time commit. It's not NPS, so there's more questions in there. Um, you know, it's not perfect, but it's, it's something to help drive a little bit. And I would also say too, that keep in mind, you know, those people that don't take the time to even fill out an NPS survey, you want to keep an eye on those folks as well. If they, that, that may be uh, telling you something um, also, so. Response rate, we could start, we could start a whole other hour on response rate and, and how to get good responses and what your responses tell you for sure. Uh, that's an excellent point. Um, okay, if nobody else has any more um, insights to give on this question, let's move on to Lilith's, um, where um, you were asking about statistical relevance of the data that you're looking at. Are there ways that we can validate this? What are the, some of the things you've, you've tested? Um, can you expand on your question a little bit? Maybe somebody's been down this road before. Not really. My kids are really screaming oh. in the back. So. Okay, all right. <laughs> I got it. Okay, we'll come back to that. I, um, I've been just keeping my eye on, on chat and I'm um, trying to answer these in the order that they come in. I don't know if I'm going to be successful, but I, I think I saw some comment that Steve Schwartz asked uh, a, a pretty insightful question in the, in the chat feature. Steve, can you come off mute and tell us what's on your mind? Sure. First of all, thanks for the tip on the uh, space bar trick. I didn't know about that one. And Genius, right? Yeah. Yes, it's definitely going to be helpful in the long run because I always find myself like scrambling to get the cursor over to the or remember the you know keystrokes to get off mute. Um, I mean, my first question was around like the difference between um, how you think about um, how you think about NPS in a B two B business versus a B two C business, and what's you know sort of what's the difference there, and how you consider those, and then also about um, whether you consider NPS a leading indicator or a trailing indicator of success. And I think I, I'm going to make an assumption here. I mean, I consider it a trailing indicator. Like if, if we're getting to that point where they're already giving us a bad rating, um, there should have been signs before that. Um, but it's also hard to tell. Um, and, and businesses certainly vary as far as like how much interaction you have with customers and with those folks that you are um, surveying. Sure, sure. Well, let's dissect this. Is that is anyone in the B2C space right now? Maybe um, raise your hand. Gab Gabriel, it's all on you. B2C. What are you thinking? Steve and I <laughs> have interacted before. <laughs> um, so we, to, to add another wrench to it, we contracted with the state of Connecticut. So we're a, a social benefit. So people have to use us, um, which throws a real wrench in that if you don't like us, you still got to use us. Um, so um, with the B2C side of things, uh, currently it solely lives under the call center team, um, the interactions with them. Uh, like I said, I'm the first hire for a, a, under a customer success team and I've been assigned our B2B uh, portion of things. Um, we're, you know, our, our whole concept is that we succeed there. They can be our champions with the customers and, and help us uh, scale things while we're still at a very, you know, we're still a very small team. Um, having said that, you know, we do have, um, we have monthly sessions pre COVID where we would invite customers to come in for feedback sessions. So in-person sessions, um, um, and those, those were really well, cause they, you know, I think that them feeling heard and listened to always went a really long way and we always had a lot of food to offer. <laughs> um, so that was something that, that was good results for us. And they do have a survey that they can answer at the end of each phone call that they make. Um, I actually am not very familiar with what the results are there because to be honest, um, given the scale, uh, we service Medicaid patients. So we service over almost a million people in Connecticut. Um, I only get looped in if it's a very escalated situation where our call center supervisors haven't been able to, to handle it. And, um, and you, so, so yeah, I'm very reactive when it comes to the B2C side of things. And, but I do engage in those monthly meetings, for example, I try to be there present and, uh, and that's all that we're doing so far. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. I love that idea of the, the uh, in-person sessions. Um, how about, how about the leading versus lagging? indicator are we mostly are we mostly thinking this is it's certainly lagging with regard to to sentiment 
Um, does anyone think of this more of a leading indicator of renewal or are we all pretty much kind of in the lagging camp? Uh, Alyssa, what do you think? I, I haven't heard from you yet today. Hate to pick on you, but I'm gonna. <laughs> Oh, you're on mute. I want. I know. I couldn't find my. Couldn't find my cursor. Yeah, called out. You got me. Um, I would think that I agree. It's certainly a trailing uh, indicator of the individual who's submitting that particular survey, but you could certainly think of it as a leading indicator for renewal for that group, as well as future customers. If you don't take the appropriate action and close that feedback loop with your customers and internally. Um, so going back, someone was talking about it. I apologize, I don't remember the name, but segmenting your customer groups um, and looking at NPS trends there uh, could help if you are looking at it as more of a leading indicator to see what patterns, if any, exist uh, and what actions to take to prevent those low scores in the future. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. So maybe, maybe we've got ourselves a, a hybrid here. Does anybody else have a really strong opinion. Uh, Walter, how about you? You're still on mute. Oh. There Space you go. bar didn't work for me. You might be on another window. If you're another window, that happened to me last week. I was hit space bar and creating a bunch of spaces in Trello. <laughs> And I was not actively on this window. Oh, um, interesting that you bring this up. So uh, we ran our first NPS campaign uh, last year and our results, we came back with 135 results after uh, sending it out through basically all of our primary contacts, which was really, really, it was like a less than a 1% return. So, um, we reshifted and we've got a new application that we're using for our uh, CS team here, um, third party application with Churn Zero. And instead of using just our primary contacts, we also wanted to survey the individuals uh, within the application as well. And got a really uh, opposite, we, we are now swamped with MPS and we've got a decent MPS score, but. It's one of those scenarios where uh, I actually don't know what to do at this point uh, with all the survey results. And so that is still actually kind of uh, on my to-do things of how we're, like my CEO is aware of it. He knows the score. He even, um, you know, did some research on his own. We analyzed it, but we have actually, we don't have, we haven't done anything actionable with it yet. So that's where I'm coming from when I'm hearing this conversation. It's like, this is wonderful. And I'm taking down tips as far as, you know, uh, maybe we do need to have somebody that just owns the NPS and then how do we get that feedback over to our product team and how do we, you know, all of those questions are coming up. That's an awesome problem to have uh, being swamped with NPS scores. I, I've never had that problem. It's always been, how do we get more? How do we get more people responding? So um, kudos yeah. to you. Yeah, we did both in-app and an email, and it was kind of a cross between if they didn't reply to the in-app, they got an email a week later, and we gave them three chances to do an NPS. So we weren't trying to just bombard them with the in-app messaging, but we gave them the option to do both. So if they didn't respond to in-app, they responded to email and vice versa. Okay, brilliant. Thanks for sharing. Oh, no problem. Uh, Alex, do we have anything else that came up in the chat? Uh, yeah, we do. We are returning shortly, so we might not have time for it. But oh. I think there's a really interesting question that was posed and that's a bunch of people touched on, which is how are you segmenting the data that you're getting from NPS? I mean, we heard a few. So we heard market segmentation, probably aligning to your sales engine. But we also heard in the chat uh, persona-based se segmentation. So are you um, segmenting the data that you get from your champion, from a power user, from an economic buyer. So really interesting subject, probably something we want to take into the Gain, Grow, Retain community because we don't have time now. I forget who yeah. asked that particular question, but just great question. I think we'll start to pose that there so we can get some responses from everybody. Um, but yeah, I think that's an excellent thing to dig into. I agree, and I'm really curious whether anybody does their NPS anonymously. Um, we, we used to and, and don't anymore, uh, and I, I, I'm really curious 
play. Good to see you. I'm always jealous of your uh, of your wall ornament there. I think that's North Carolina. The, the NC, yeah. Heather Cottle, good to see you. Um, perfect. Well, I think we've got most people back. Um, so uh, we'll kick it over to our hosts, for just for our facilitators for a few minutes, and then I'll shoot out a couple of stats for you guys uh, about the community. So um, Jay, maybe we'll, let's start with you. Just uh, maybe one key question that you feel like the, the group was trying to answer in the enterprise room and maybe some of the discussion that came out of that. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a ton here to cover. So we had a great discussion. Um, I think the the one big question we talked a lot about customer effort score versus NPS and CSAT, all these different mechanisms. But at the end of the day, the one big takeaway that I heard was that it's less about the methodology you use and more about uh, the methodology that you use and the commitment that you have to sort of following up on everything you hear from the customer, closing the loop. Um, don't send a survey if you don't plan to respond to what you hear is what uh, Ben Elserod said, which I thought was really awesome. So that was, that was, that was one big takeaway from our room. Awesome. That's perfect. And uh, Emily Campos, how about from uh, the SMB room, maybe same thing, you know, what was uh, one of the, one of the major questions that you feel like was brought out of the discussion and, and some of the points around that? Yeah, absolutely. We had some awesome questions. We did spend quite a bit of time on one of them though. We got some really good participation around how you close that loop internally, how you package up um, MPS information for your executive team. And we had some fantastic contributors to that question. Um, Laura Culbertson, um, I thought really kind of hit it on the head with <clears throat> kind of kind of in the theory of starting with the end in mind, of communicating with your executives and getting them to maybe uh, draw out that information or, or let you know what they're looking for in that NPS data. Uh, she also mentioned making sure you integrate uh, NPS data with maybe some product feedback and, and, and feedback that you get from other parts of the organization so that you create that cohesive picture. Um, and then on that subject, we had one person who was CS hire number one, uh, CSM number one asked like, how do I even get my executives to buy into this in the first place? And we had some really good discussions there on, um, you know, communicating through peers at your level um, to, to really get buy-in and work your way up to get that eventual executive buy-in. So I'd say we probably spent a good half of our time on the subject. It was really great to see people so engaged. Awesome, that's perfect. Uh, and thank you, Emily, for uh, for facilitating that session. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll have you back here again soon. Um, we'll appreciate everybody joining today. I know uh, just to end it, I'm sure you guys are probably not on pins and needles like I've been all day. But um, we started with about 150, uh, 162, I think, actually uh, for accuracy, 162 members in Game Girl Retain, and right now we just um, eclipsed 500 from this morning. So. Um, had a good, you know, good push this morning to get a, a good group in there. Brian Hartley, thanks for doing some moderation already this morning. Um, Tribe just rolled out a new moderation dashboard and broke my admin settings. So I've, uh, <laughs> you know, Brian's gracefully stepped in and helped do that. But, um, but yeah, we're excited. You know, we uh, don't see this. This is more of the beginning. You know, we're excited to, to launch this to the public. Um, really appreciate everybody's participation so far. Um, and hopefully as we get this off the ground in terms of the online community, we can get back to uh, continue to innovate and find new ways to engage with the community, try and find ways to bring smaller discussions to the, to the forefront, um, try and find new formats to keep you guys all engaged um, and make sure again, I think at the end of the day, our, our big takeaway is just trying to connect leader to leader. So um, appreciate everybody's effort so far. Thank you all for sharing LinkedIn messages. I think uh, we've successfully uh, made everyone hate the color magenta, um, and that was the goal. So um, appreciate everybody's push. And if you, uh, now that it's open to the public, feel free, you know, as you're in conversations, as you're going through your day-to-day, -day, um, as you hear things, please try and bring it back to the community. Uh, we want to try and keep everything actionable and tangible to real-life situations, hopefully, and, and what you guys are going through uh, in the moment. And um, would love to keep that going. So um, thank you guys again. And hopefully we'll uh, see you guys all again next Thursday. Same time, same place. Right. Have a good one, everyone. Again, everybody. Thanks, Take everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.